So 160 years ago, during the Battle of Gettysburg, a Union soldier on Cemetery Hill fired this bullet. And it hit the house that is now my paper cartridges workshop here on Baltimore Street, about 400 yards from Cemetery Hill. And this is a rare surviving piece of physical evidence of a forgotten part of the Gettysburg battle. I'm Brett from papercartridges.com here in my bullet riddled shop. And uh, today I'm going to see how much we can learn from this bullet and look into the nearly untold story of the sharpshooters that were fighting here at the southern edge of Gettysburg Town for two days back in 1863. So how did I get this bullet? Uh, after I rented my shop, the landlord came by. Uh, he's a Gettysburg native in his 80s. And he said he found it while he was cleaning the attic out uh, many years ago. He was up in a tight part of the attic and found it buried in uh, bird droppings and feathers. And uh, how do we know that this is a Civil War bullet? Well, it's definitely a U.S. bullet. It's a three-ring Burton Minier ball, uh, kind of a rare variant, uh, a star in base, probably made uh, at Washington Arsenal. And the star got put there by the compression dies that form the bullet. And star-based bullets uh, are not very common, and they're usually attributed to Washington Arsenal. But what this means is that this is unquestionably a United States bullet from Civil War production. And you can see the imprints left by the rifling grooves of the gun barrel. And these lines were engraved, a timestamp, so to speak, when the soldier pulled the trigger uh, back in July 1863. And these grooves have been there ever since. So here's how the soldier would have loaded this round. Uh, he would have taken a paper cartridge that holds the bullet and the powder. The soldier tears off the end of the cartridge so he can pour the gunpowder down the barrel. Then he removes the bullet completely from the paper, rams the bullet down, and he fires it with a percussion cap. Why did the soldier fire this bullet into Gettysburg? And the most likely guess, and this is only a guess, is that he was shooting back at the Rebs uh, that had occupied the town, rebel sharpshooters. On the evening of July 1st, on the first day of battle, Union troops got driven back through the streets of the town, uh, but thanks to General Lee's unclear orders to Ewell and some quick-thinking federal generals, the Union held on to Cemetery Hill. You've probably seen the movie. You can deprive the enemy of the high ground. Of course, that high ground was Cemetery Hill, and it is the key terrain feature at Gettysburg. Everything else sort of revolved around it. So by July 2nd, the Yankees hold the hill, Confederates hold the town. In 19th century linear warfare, the town of Gettysburg itself is an obstacle. You can't move attack formations of troops in order through a town. It's just not possible. But the southern edge of the town is only 400 yards from the base of Cemetery Hill, and that is within rifle range. So Cemetery Hill is the major federal position for the next two days of battle. Uh, artillery up there can command a large field of fire. And to do something about that, the Confederate sharpshooters took up positions in town. I mean, right here, literally outside the windows of my shop. They put barricades up in the streets. They set shooting positions from high windows. They went up onto rooftops. They knocked holes in walls and attics. And they put some extremely effective fire onto Cemetery Hill. And some of these so-called sniper's nests are still around today like at the Farnsworth house, the Shriver house. You might wonder who were these Confederate sharpshooters. Uh, the story of the Confederate sharpshooters is definitely deserving of its own video. Let me know if you want to make uh, a video specifically on the Confederate sharpshooter battalions. They were born out of a tactical realization in 1862 that the rifle musket like this is not being used anywhere near its inherent capability. And units of well-trained sharpshooters who can screen and skirmish uh, in support of the main body would be very valuable. 
So in theory, every Confederate brigade was authorized by Act of Congress, uh, one battalion of sharpshooters, but there's very little consistency in how that was applied. But in theory, the best shots from the brigade would be rolled up into a single sharpshooter battalion. So here on Baltimore Street, this area was occupied by the sharpshooter battalion of O'Neill's Brigade in Rhodes Division, commanded by Major Eugene Blackford. Blackford sharpshooters had English-made short infield rifles, which they really liked. They were issued imported English ammunition, super high-quality ammunition that's accurate to the sights of the infield rifle. And a tiny number, a couple here and there, got Whitworths. Uh, but these sharpshooter battalions trained using the British manuals. Uh, they knew how to estimate distance. They knew how to adjust their sights for the range. Ordinary Civil War soldiers simply weren't taught that. So the sharpshooters had the ammunition allowances for target practice, extensive target practice by Civil War standards. And if you think about it, these soldiers have British rifles. They're using British ammunition. They're trained using the British manuals. They're basically British infantry in butternut. Back to Gettysburg, it's very unfortunate that development has totally ruined the visual prominence of Cemetery Hill. It looks nothing today like it did back in 1863. So here's a November 1863 view. Uh, compared to the modern view of Baltimore Street, about all you can tell is the slight elevation change. But during the battle, you had an open, clear line of sight from Baltimore Street to Cemetery Hill. Uh, from the upper windows and roofs of the town, the Confederate sharpshooters were about the same elevation as the Union troops up on Cemetery Hill. And this bullet was in the cartridge box of one of those Union soldiers up on Cemetery Hill. So who were the Union troops up there? Uh, most of them were from Howard's 11th Corps. Uh, most of them were German immigrants. And their only combat experience so far had been Chancellorsville a few months earlier. And you'll remember it was the 11th Corps that was surprised by Jackson's flank march and completely routed. And then July 1st, first day of battle at Gettysburg, that's a chaotic retreat through the town. Now they're up on Cemetery Hill. They hold Cemetery Hill against Early's attack uh, late on July 2nd, and they occupy it through July 3rd. And they're under sharpshooter fire for nearly this whole time. They had a little bit of cover with these low stone walls, but not very much, especially not to uh, give cover to an entire corps. But just from sharpshooter fire alone, they took over 300 casualties. And the Confederate fire was constant and brisk. Major Blackford reported that all of his men fired hundreds of rounds each. He personally picked up a rifle and fired over 100 rounds. So imagine being a Union soldier. Your only experience of battle so far in this war has been retreat and chaos. And you've got a rifle that they handed you that no one has bothered to teach you how to really use. And the enemy is four or 500 yards away from you, blazing away at long range. Uh, one of the 11th Corps generals said, the red fire played havoc with us. Uh, there's a marker on Cemetery Hill that says the sharpshooter fire was annoying, uh, kind of an understatement. But I guess if you were one of those 11th Corps soldiers, you could just sit there and helplessly take fire, uh, maybe try to squeeze in to find some cover behind the stone wall. Or you could try to shoot back. So I'm here up on Cemetery Hill. Uh, I came up here expecting only to take some photos, but then it started to rain and the tourists left. So. While I had the opportunity, I am standing within a few yards, maybe a few dozen yards from probably where that bullet was loaded and fired from up here on Cemetery Hill. So these stone walls in the area are where the soldiers of the 11th Corps on the, the end of the second day and into uh, July 3rd, they're taking cover behind these stone positions, being greatly annoyed by sharpshooter fire. But I have set up my camera I'm actually borrowing General Howard's headquarters marker as a camera stand. But uh, using the satellite map on my phone, if you were to draw a line from the camera straight through me down into the town, the building where my shop is at is in an exact line from where I am standing. So somewhere in this area, uh, as close as I can tell, this is several hundred yards from the building, 
it's where the that round would have been fired in order for it to hit the attic the way it did so uh an interesting feeling knowing that 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 round started its flight somewhere in this area and ends up uh, in my building a few hundred yards away and of course it is the borough of gettysburg so there is nothing but construction going on behind me uh progress apparently keeps progressing or you could try to shoot back and do something uh, and that's what they did they shot back probably aiming at the puffs of smoke from the confederate rifles three four hundred yards away and that is probably how this bullet ended up in this house uh, maybe there were some rebs up on the roof uh, they might have knocked holes through the wall in the attic or through the roof uh, and they're firing at cemetery hill and a union soldier loaded and rammed this bullet and fired it back This bullet ends up hitting the home of the widow Dunwoody, who owned this house in 1863. And unfortunately for the poor widow Dunwoody, her house was in the direct line of fire uh, from one of the most crucial terrain features in American military history. And I have to wonder, could the widow Dunwoody have ever imagined that her small town on the quiet little hill with the cemetery on it a quarter mile away would be the focal point for the largest battle ever fought in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> History is funny sometimes. But anyways, uh, where was this bullet fired from and can we even try to determine maybe which unit or which brigade? Uh, obviously we can't pinpoint an exact location, uh, but we can get close. So we'll do some amateur ballistic forensics and see what else this bullet can tell us. But most importantly, this bullet is relatively intact. That means it was moving relatively slow when it finally impacted this house. Uh, a U.S. bullet like this has an initial muzzle velocity of about 960 feet per second, assuming the soldier got all the powder down the barrel. Uh, so assuming 960 feet per second, hitting something hard at 900 plus feet per second will splatter the bullet into unrecognizable chunks. Uh, when I go shooting, my friends and I always dig through the backstop looking for bullets and the closer the range the target is the more deformed bullets are this is a burton minier bullet fired at a steel target uh, from about a hundred yards away so on a hard impact it is deformed beyond all recognition uh, this one was fired from about 300 yards away this hit dirt uh, this one from about uh, four maybe 450 and finally, this bullet was fired at 600 yards, and you can see it, it also hit dirt, and it is generally still a, a bullet shape. Uh, but the, the farther away the range is, the more air resistance has time to slow down the velocity of the bullet. So the bullet impacts at slower speeds, and that means it's not deformed as much uh, as it was at, at close range. So that's why I... I, I assume, and it's a fair assumption, that this bullet found here in the Widow Dunwoody's house was fired from at least 500 yards away, simply because of how intact it still is. If it had been fired closer, it would have been deformed beyond recognition. But knowing that it had to fly 400, 500 or more yards, we can eliminate a lot of potential areas where it could have been fired from. And in fact, it, it really eliminates everywhere but the Union positions right up on top of Cemetery Hill, which have a line of sight to the Widow Dunwoody's house. Uh, there were Union skirmishers that were much more forward of Cemetery Hill, but from where they were at, they didn't have a line of sight to this house, so their bullets would have hit something before they made it here. This is a picture from the 1890s uh, taken from a wooden observation platform where the statue of General Reynolds is on Cemetery Hill today. And this is where I believe most likely that the bullet was fired since the sharpshooter activity uh, back and forth down Baltimore Street was heaviest from here. And they had the clearest line of sight and line of fire uh, from the hill to the Widow Dunwoody's house. And the stone wall in this photo is clearly visible and it shows the line of sight that soldiers would have had into the southern part of town. 
And the reservoir that you see was built in the 1880s. That was not here during the battle. But that pump station building uh, still stands today. So that gives an excellent reference point. Uh, today, the reservoirs uh, are still there, but they're these big eyesore water tanks that have been placed at the foot of uh, <laughs> the most significant military terrain feature in Civil War history uh, of all places. But several Union units were right here. It's a mix of several brigades uh, repulsing conf uh, uh, Early's Confederate attack. It's a hotbed of activity and maybe the strongest point in the Union line. So there, there could have been any number, literally dozens of possible regiments that may, in theory, have fired this bullet. And this picture is from a little bit lower down Cemetery Hill, East Cemetery Hill, by the 75th Ohio's positions. They had a mostly clear line of sight uh, to the houses on Baltimore Street. And you can see the German Reformed Church. Uh, that's a clear reference point. It's possible the bullet could have been fired from here. But the further east that you go, the less and less likely that the bullet fired from there would have hit uh, this house because the federal positions are lower. So the bullet would have hit the brick wall of the house uh, rather than coming down through the roof. And this is probably the least likely position it could have been fired from, from the longest distance, uh, from the west side of Cemetery Hill. It would have had to follow Baltimore Street almost perfectly, but the curved trajectory of the long-range rifle musket bullet means it would have cleared the houses to fall down onto the Widow Dunwoody's roof. But there, this is a really narrow window where the shot could be possible. Uh, this is around where Krasnowski's brigade was. Uh, they were engaged by sharpshooters, but the positions were a lot closer uh, from the McCreary house, the Farnsworth house area. So if this bullet was fired from here, it was probably not intended <laughs> to go that far. It's probably shot at revs that were a lot closer, maybe two or 300 yards away, and the, the shot was just wild. So it's improbable but technically possible it could have been fired from the western side of Cemetery Hill. Now wherever it was fired from, it flew through the air for about a second, maybe a second and a half before it hit this building. And uh, it just had enough velocity to punch through a shingle and uh, end up in the attic. And it sat there for over a hundred years covered by decades of bird feathers, bird droppings, until my landlord <laughs> finds it when he went up there to do some repairs. And it's hard to put into words, really, the sense I get when I, I hold this bullet. Uh, this, this was fired in anger. It was fired to kill during the bloodiest battle of America's bloodiest war and the largest battle ever fought in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, this bullet was part of that. This is one of seven million bullets, by the way, fired, uh, according to at least one estimate, fired at Gettysburg. But it was seven million of these that made the battle what it was. You know, artillery helped a little bit. But 90% of wounds at Gettysburg were from small arms. And this is one of the seven million fired. And all of that happened in three days, three days out of the last 160 years. But the impact left is so significant, such a profound contribution of physical objects uh, in the form of hundreds and hundreds of tons of lead and iron shot that uh, you know, well over a century later, a century and a half later, these little physical reminders of the battle are still being found. So uh, this, this bullet, it, it's a link back to those three days in July, which really uh, were not all that long ago. Well, I'm Brett from PaperCartridges.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to have a project coming up shortly where I try to recreate the uh, Confederate sharpshooters fire up on onto Cemetery Hill. So keep an eye out for that. We'll really appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.